If you're looking to make detailed and complicated components out of carbon fibre like these quadcopter parts, really the easiest way to do that is using CNC machining. Fortunately, with the new generation of light duty CNC routers, this has become more affordable than ever. However, there isn't an awful lot of information on how you go from your original design through to setting the feeds and speeds and really getting the most out of your CNC router. So whether you already have one or you're looking to invest in a machine, this video is for you. To get started with CNC machining, the first thing you will need is a CAD design package to design the parts. We're using the excellent Fusion 360, which amazingly at the moment is offered free of charge to students, educators and enthusiasts. We're then going to use the inbuilt CAM functionality within Fusion to generate our toolpaths and then the G-code. The G-code will then be interpreted by the UCCNC software, which came with the StepCraft router, to control the machine itself. In case you're not familiar with desktop routers, I'm briefly going to go over what they're all about. So we have a spindle here, which is a router spindle that does all of the cutting work of the carbon fiber. So that has a carbide cutter mounted into it and that physically routes out the material. Now to control that, we have a three axis machine here. So we have control on the Z axis, which is the vertical here, and then the X axis, which brings it across, and then also the Y axis down the length of the machine. So essentially we can position that spindle anywhere in this working area. Now to get control of that, the machine is run on what's called G-code. And we're going to show you how to generate that now. We already have the model of the component that we want to produce drawn up in CAD. So you can see that here now. Um, here's the model and this is the design environment of Fusion. If we click on the top corner here, we can go into the CAM settings and that gives us all of the manufacturing options which will control CNC machines. So if we take a quick look, we'll just create a new setup here. And the first thing it's asking us for is the model orientation. So if we click on that and then click to select the Z axis. So the Z axis is the vertical axis. So we'll click on this edge there. And then on the X axis, that can be across that way and it'll automatically work out what the Y axis would have to be from there. So then we go into the stock tab at the top. And because we're actually cutting this component from one millimeter material, we can set the top offset, so the extra material in the stock, to zero millimeters. That gives us a one millimeter component out of one millimeter sheet. So we'll click OK, and there we have the setup. And now we're on to the machining operation itself. So it's a 2D operation, it's just a profile. And then we'll go down and it's a contour machining operation because it's just machining the outer edges. So first thing we need to do is select a tool. I've already got these tools programmed in to the system, but what we're using is a PCB cutter. This is a 1.8 millimeter PCB cutter, so you could get right down to two millimeter holes or radiuses. And you can see we've just set the design, the dimensions for that tool up. So the length of the flutes, the length of the shaft, the diameter of the shaft, and it's very, very quick and easy to add new tools as you need them. So we'll click OK, and that will bring in the feeds and speeds that have already been set for that tool. Finding the best feed and speed to set your machine to can be quite tricky. So what we suggest doing is play it safe, set your feed rate, so the rate at which the cutter goes through the material, very slow, something around about 500 millimeters per minute, and the plunge rate slower still, that's the rate at which the cutter actually plunges into the material itself, that's something around about 50 to 100 millimeters per minute. And then the spindle speed should be as fast as it can go. Now this will wear the tool slightly more quickly, but it takes load off the machine, will give a very, very accurate cut. As you gain experience in the way that your mat particular material is cutting, you can increase those rates until it starts to sacrifice some of the accuracy or excessively load the machine. With all of the feed and speed rates inputted, we're going to go onto the geometry tab on the top here and then select all of the edges that we want to cut. So you see all 39 chains there are selected. And then we're going to add tabs onto the part. Now the tabs are, you can see here, small 
linking components that actually keep the, the centre of the material attached to the, the stock material. And the purpose of those is when machining, so that these small parts don't sort of fly out of the part and maybe foul the machine or um, potentially break a cutter. There are other ways you can secure it down. A uh, common way to do it is just using double-sided tape over the, the reverse of the material and then firmly attach that down. And again, it stops those components from, from fouling the machine. So the tabs to set those up, we just click on the tab option here, set the width that we want the tab to be. They can be very, very small. Um, so we're going to set 0.5 millimeters and then the tab height, I'm going to set that at 1.5 millimeters. Now you'll see a little bit later why 1.5 millimeters is the height I'm setting. Um, and then the distance, you can play around with, with different, different distances. I'm going to go for 25 millimeters separation. That looks like pretty, pretty well spaced. Everything seems to have something attaching it. Um, you might choose to manually control where those are as well. So we'll click on to heights and in heights, we've got the clearance height. So that's um, the height at which the tool clears all of the material. The retract height, which is between operations. So when it goes from one section to the next, um, then we've got the feed height set down at two millimeters. That's the point at which it starts its cutting operation. Top height at zero millimeters, which is fine. And then the bottom height, we're going to set it from the stock bottom minus one millimeter. And that will give us a cut um, that goes cleanly through the material. Um, you, you want to drop the tool right the way through the carbon and into the waste material underneath. So then on passes, these will all be fine for what we're doing. Um, but you might choose, if you were cutting particularly thick material, multiple depths. Um, and the purpose of multiple depth is that your tool actually drops down into the profile, starts machining around, but doesn't go all the way, all of the way through. It might drop maybe one or two millimeters at a time and conduct the cut. Um, the purpose of doing that is to stop the tool from getting excessively hot um, or to take load off the machine. And on thicker materials, anything over sort of probably three millimeters, you would, you would be looking to do multiple cuts. And thinner materials like this, certainly one millimeter, you'll get excellent results with just a single pass right, right the way through. We'll just take off the multiple depths on there. Um, linking, that's all fine as it is in stock settings. So we'll just click OK and that will generate our toolpath. OK, so we can actually see the toolpath now and you can see the tabs are these sort of steps here. And you'll notice the reason why we set them to one and a half millimeters is because the tabs go from that bottom line, which is one millimeter through. So then we got half a millimeter into the material itself. We can actually click on simulate here and see the tool itself and the, the path that it takes and watch the machining operation. So that's the tool and it's just following through the path. And it's quite a nice way to just preview whether um, there's going to be any problems or it's doing it in the order that you expect. So that's all looking fine and we can actually post the process now. So generate the g-code which is this button at the top. So we're using the UCCNC post processor um, and we're just going to make that. This is the frame lower section so we'll just name that frame lower and then click on the post. Choose the name for that, frame lower, save. And that's the G-code itself. So we'll run that in the UCCNC software shortly. We've got a choice here of some of the sheet materials available from our factory. Here we've got a 0.25 millimeter sheet, which as you can see is very, very pliable. Um, these range right up to sheets at sort of three millimeters, which are suitable for very structurally demanding applications. For this project, a uh, one millimeter sheet here would be absolutely perfect. The machine has this sacrificial bed um, that I've attached on using double-sided tape. This is um, a spoil board or a waste board um, that the cutter can drop into um, and sort of carve through without damaging the bed of the machine itself. To attach the carbon, um, we're just going to use wood screws into the spoil board in the corners and that'll hold it down. 
and then also, although not necessary, um, I'm going to put some spray mount onto the back of the sheet, which on thin sections of carbon, below one millimeter, it helps just to stop the carbon from lifting during the machining operation. I'm going to fit a fresh cutter into the machine. So just lock out the spindle and undo the collet here. And that'll allow us to withdraw the old tool and then just reverse the process to put it back in. These PCB cutters that we're using really are superb. They are designed for cutting PCB, which is fiberglass and resin, but in composition, that's very similar to carbon fiber, making them absolutely ideal. We've opened up UCCNC. This is the software that actually controls the machine. And then we've loaded the file that we've just generated, and we can see that on the screen here. So the next thing to do is position um, the machine onto our workpiece. So looking at the machine itself, we need to bring the head over onto the center of the toolpath. So we'll just control the machine down. So you can see this yellow marker in the center here, that's indicating where the center of the tool is. So if we click zero all, that is its initial reference point. Now I've set the origin to be in the center of the stock. So if we just position the machine into the center and then lower the tool head. And then once we get close in on the position, we want to reduce the, the jog feed to a lower rate so we can be more precise with the action. Once it's almost in position and almost touching the surface, you set the jog speed to its lowest setting and then very, very slowly bring the tool down. A piece of paper helps because as soon as you start to see it pinch, you know that you're close enough to the surface. So that's just, just gripping it there. So that's fine. And then we'll set the zeros for all of the axes on there. So we've got the center set now in the stock, but it's always worthwhile just increase the jog feed there. It's always worthwhile just doing a quick check to see that the tool itself works within the stock material. And you can do that just by scrolling this up and just checking once it gets to the edge of the tool path that you're still within your material, which you can see there we are. So we've got no problem. Um, just increase the jog speed up a little bit more to do this a bit quicker. Okay, so we'll go over to the far side there. And you can see, once again, the tool is off the part, well within the material. And likewise, for the bottom there, that's the same. Normally, I would use the dust extraction that's built in um, to the machine here. But today, I'm going to start the cycle without the brush in place so you can see what's going on. The spindle can be controlled by the software or manually. Uh, today, I'm just going to do that manually. So we just switch on the controller and then set the speed, which is going to be full speed, and then press go. And then all we have to do now is click the cycle start in the software and the cutting will take place. You can now see the cutter following the path and how easily it works through the carbon fiber sheet. To keep dust and chippings down, we're using a vacuum cleaner. While not ideal, this provides a better view of what's happening. Occasionally during a pass, you will see the cutter lift slightly and resume the cut. This is the operation where the tabs are being left in the stock to keep the offcuts in place. With the brush fitted and local extraction turned on, you can see how clean the cutting operation becomes. The dust extractor is an optional extra from Stepcraft, but one that we would strongly recommend if working with carbon fibre. The footage has been sped up here. This particular cutting operation took a little over three minutes in total. The machine would be capable of fast cutting speeds, but as mentioned earlier, this may compromise the precision. With the machining operation complete, we can home the machine and remove the sheet from the spoil board. You will see clearly where the cutter has plunged through the carbon and into the wood below. Despite this, the board can still be used many times before it would become worn and require replacement. 
you can see that most of the tabs, the cutout sections, have broken out when we've peeled it off. That's because we use spray tack to mount it down. Any that are remaining, you can just break out using a Stanley knife. And then the small tags, burrs that are remaining, can just be quickly removed using a permagrip file. The residue that's been left by the spray adhesive can quickly and easily be wiped off using acetone. Just checking the finished component against the original drawings, um, we've managed to achieve a tolerance better than plus minus 0.1 millimeters. So there we have it, finished carbon fiber part. If you've already got one of these machines, I hope this video inspires you to make your own precision carbon fiber components. Remember, Easy Composites has a full range of carbon fiber sheets for you to be getting on with projects just like this. If you want more information on the Stepcraft machine that we've been using today, we've put a link in the description below. If you've not seen them already, we've got lots of other videos on working with carbon fiber. If you've enjoyed this video, click like. If you want to see new videos as we release them, hit subscribe.